range and which scores fall outside the normal range. And that's one thing I've learned over the years about IQ is I've given so many of them and I don't even think, I don't even hardly think about a full scale IQ anymore. I don't even give it much thought really because I'm always looking at the pattern. And so if someone were given an IQ test and there's many, have, have some of you seen a, a profile of an IQ test and the subtests and all the scores? Uh, there's many subtests. And like, for example, one, the most frequently given IQ test has four broad areas that it measures. So there's memory, speed, uh, language-based areas, and visually-based areas. And so it's more important to look at how the profile is. If, if everyone score, if someone took a, an IQ test and all their scores were kind of up here or kind of in the middle, then that full-scale IQ is probably pretty meaningful because their scores are kind of even, you know. Uh, but if their scores are like this, lots of low scores and some high scores and some medium scores, then that full-scale IQ doesn't mean as much. It's just throwing everything together and coming up with a, you know, a combination. And so it, it doesn't tell you as much about how the kid might do. You'd have to look more at, well, where is this kid low? Oh, he's low in short-term memory. Well, then, uh, and he's missing out on direction. And he doesn't remember what I say. And so, well, preferential seating near the teacher, give him uh, written directions, give him photocopies of lecture notes, uh, teach him memory strategies, and that puts him you know, he's going to be able to perform better. So that one area can be addressed. So, whereas if someone had scores that were all kind of consistently low average, maybe, and that tells you something different about the kid. It does kind of tell you that, well, this kid is probably going to be more concrete in his learning, so when you um, teach him something, you're going to have to show him pictures or a demonstration. But when you give him directions, show him, Here's what I want you to do, and you go ahead and tell him the main ideas. You don't expect him to, if he reads a chapter, you don't say, well, what's the main idea of this chapter? Instead, it's like, okay, the main idea of this chapter is the three reasons are, and you tell him directly. And because if you have lower abilities, you, you don't draw those conclusions as easily. So scores are important. I mean, they mean a lot as far as how a kid might function in the classroom. Uh, or in life, of course. And now here's some, I think we can kind of skip by a few of these things because they're kind of technical and um, uh, they just talk more about this normal curve. But most intelligence tests have a mean of 100 and uh, again on that, on that, and most reading tests and math tests and all academic usually have a mean of 100, which, which is the exact mid-range. So again, if you think of that bell-shaped curve, if you split it right down the middle, that score is 100 at the 50th percentile. So you're right in the middle of everyone uh, compared to everyone your age. And then one thing that's confusing about IQ scores is that, that you'll have uh, uh, sections, you'll have for the overall areas measured, they'll use a standard score. But for the actual tasks they have to do in an area, they'll use a scale score. And scale scores have a mean of 10. Don't ask me why some tests do this, but I think it's just the way they develop them. And so you see scores jumping all over the place. Like here's 100 for the verbal score, but the actual tasks they had to do, they may have 10s or 9s or 8s. It's just a different kind of score, a way of expressing it. <coughs> the best thing to do is focus on the percentile rank. Uh, because that's consistent no matter what kind of score you use. Um, I'll show you an example, but anyway. Um, so whatever percentile rank score you obtain, it means that you, your score was better than whatever percentage uh, uh, you obtained. Like if you're at the 75th percentile, you did better than 75% of the people your age, theoretically, and only 25% did better than you. So 75% would be upper end of average, that would be a good score. Yeah? Is it too simplistic to say that if you have a full scale of, <clears throat> let's say 90, that you want to see the broad score or the standard score around 90, 
in turn, you know what I'm saying? Because you're getting at the variations in the four areas. And I, I hear that a lot in meetings. Well, we've got a full scale of this, so we want to see standard scores of this. Is that too simplistic? Um, well, if you have a standard score of 90 on an IQ test, are you saying that we want to see standard scores of 90 on academic tests? Yes. To, see, to show that they're kind of uh, achieving at a level commensurate with their IQ. Is that what you mean? Yeah, and what I'm getting at is if you're, let's say you're low in two areas, let's say you're low in working memory, it, isn't it more accurate to say, to, to actually acknowledge that and realize that it's not going to be as high in academic tests that involve working memory? Because that's not really in these meetings, that people don't really get into that. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair thing to say. You might, you know, a lot, but almost all tasks are going to require some working memory. But what's more important is, um, is that whenever you look at that IQ and it's 90, the overall IQ is 90, and it's 90 because working memory pulled it down, pulled the overall IQ down. It's more important to look at how they did in all four areas. Now I'm talking about the Weschler intelligence scale, which is the most frequently given. It's more important to talk about how they did in all four areas as far as how they might function in class. <coughs> keep, in, keep in mind, like, there is an alternative IQ you can come up with if working memory and processing speed are significantly weaker than the other two areas of verbal comprehension and perceptual organization. Because uh, so many people who have learning disorders or attention disorders or brain damage, you know, an accident or any kind of disorder, those are the areas that are often most affected is processing speed and working memory. So you can use a table you know, published by the test company where you can come up with a different IQ that's just based on verbal comprehension and perceptual organization, the two top areas. <coughs> they do that sometimes in the school, but this is becoming an accepted practice where, where the weaknesses in processing speed and working memory don't really tell you uh, as much about the kid. The other two areas are measuring higher level thinking, uh, verbal comprehension and perceptual organization. And so it means that kid may not remember things very well because of working memory, or he may be slow in getting things done, but if you make accommodations, he should be able to comprehend and understand. Now, I don't know if what you're referring to if the, if the profile was like that, but if you, had a, if you have a a working, you know, working memory score of 70, and your full scale IQ is 90, that means that you probably did better in those other areas. And so, the, the working memory task is, is misleading you. Well, you know, score. as a special ed teacher, I was never taught how to, how to look at these scores, analyze them, and, and tailor them into accommodations and services. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, I'm trying to figure out to, to give these kids the accommodations and the services that they need yeah. instead of just throwing the standard accommodation in the IEP. Yeah. And yeah, so I think you do have to look at the, uh, uh, you do have to look at how they perform in certain areas. And so if you'd like, I could go ahead and we could just shift immediately to the ability testing and what it measures and what the implications are of those low scores. So, I mean, this is getting, this is kind of, um, uh, oops. Okay, test manufacturers determine, yeah, they're the ones who determine what kind of scores you're going to see. Okay. <coughs> and so, and by the way, expect a variety of scores. But anyway, if you ever are looking at scores on a test and you're confused about because there's, there just seems to be a whole flurry of scores, just focus on the percentile ranks and that will give you the best picture. Anything from the 25th to the 75th percentile is average. I know that's a big range, but especially if it's 50th, that means if it's around the 40s, 50s, 60s, that's pretty good, that's right in the middle. And so just focus on the percentiles if the scores seem confusing. Um, there's also age scores and grade scores. And here's a descriptive classification, you have this in your handout, but Usually, these are, the, these are the classifications that um, tests give scores. Um, so if you see, you know, 
This is, the, this is definitely the classification for an IQ test, the WISC-4. But it may also be the same for a reading test or a language test. Sometimes the scores are 85 to 115 for average. Um, now that puts you at the 15th percentile to the 85th percentile. So I think this gives you a better, most people are falling, most average people fall in this range. And okay, so we'll just go ahead and talk about the, the IQ test and I'll show you how 